Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1, 2, 3 and the first part of verse 4. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And the first part of verse 4. Lift up your eyes and look about you. May the Lord bless the reading of his words today. Let us now join Aaron and Shannon in singing our a song of praise, our first a song of praise today, See a Victory. God bless everyone. For every child of God defeats this evil world, we achieve this victory through our faith. 1 John 5 verse 4.
Our most gracious and loving Father in heaven, thank you that in Jesus we always have the victory. And today our hearts are filled with gratitude and there is so much joy. Thank you for bringing us together in fellowship with you and bless this worship streaming. Bless every part and Lord, bind us today in your love and in your grace. For this we pray in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Coming next is our uh, time for the children. And then uh, after that, we will have another song of praise uh, with Aaron and Shannon. And then the scripture reading by Yuan and a special item, an instrumental item uh, from Noel. God bless everyone and happy Sabbath. My God is so big, so great, and so mighty, so strong. There's nothing he, can, he cannot do, right? Y'all, are right. you awake? <laughs> you got this. This says, My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. He made the trees, He made the seas, He made the elephants too. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. We've got a great, big, wonderful God. We've got a great, big, wonderful God. A God who's always victorious, always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful God. We've got a great, big, wonderful God. We've got a great, big, wonderful God. A God who's always victorious, always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful God. One more time. We've got a great, big, wonderful God. We've got a great, big, wonderful God, a God who's always victorious, always watching over us, a great, big, wonderful God. We've got a great, big, wonderful God, we've got a great, big, wonderful God, a God who's always victorious, always watching over us, a great, big, a God, He is a God who's always victorious, He's always watching over us, a great, big, wonderful God. That's almost a mouthful, isn't it? He is a great, big, wonderful God. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called Now I Can See. Today's memory verse is from John chapter 9, verse 25. It says, One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. The message for today's story is we serve God when we tell others what He has done for us. When something wonderful happens to you, whom do you tell about it? Well, a long time ago, something wonderful happened to a blind man. Whom do you think he told? One day, Jesus saw a young man who had been born blind. The young man sat by the road begging people to give him just a little money. But Jesus didn't give him any money. He gave him something much, much better. Jesus spit on the ground, made a little mud with the spit, and put the mud on the man's eyes. Go wash in the pool of Siloam, Jesus told the man. So the blind man went to the pool and washed. And an amazing thing happened. As soon as the mud was rinsed from his eyes, he could see. Imagine how happy he was. And imagine how surprised his family was when he came home. He was like a different person. In fact, the neighbors weren't even sure it was the same man. Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg, they asked. 
Yes, that's him, some said. No, no, he only looks like him, others said. This young man couldn't wait to tell them what Jesus had done for him. Yes, I was blind, he said. I was born blind and I could never see until today. The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Salome and wash. So I went to the pool and washed the mud off and then I could see. Some neighbors took the man who had been born blind to the Jewish rulers. But the Jewish rulers didn't want to believe that Jesus had made him see. And they didn't want anyone else saying that Jesus had made him see either. So they sent for his parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? This man's parents were afraid of the Jewish rulers, and they didn't want to answer. He is our son, they said, and we know he was born blind, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we really don't know. Ask him. He will speak for himself. But this young man was not afraid of the Jewish rulers. He was so thankful that Jesus had done something good for him, and he wouldn't keep quiet. He told the rulers about the mud and how he had washed it off in the pool of Siloam. And guess what? They chased him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard about that, he went to find the man. For the first time, the man saw the one who had healed him. He saw Jesus smile, and he smiled back. Then the man knelt before Jesus and thanked him for healing him. He would never, ever forget this day, and he would never stop telling people about the wonderful thing Jesus had done for him. the place
our scripture reading today is from John 9, verse 25. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know one thing I do know. I was blind, but now I see. Happy Sabbath, everyone. To Noel, thank you for the instrumental item. And to Aaron and Shannon as well, thank you for the songs of praise today. And these songs came from their Instagram prize every Friday at 8.30 in the evening. And I would like to invite the church to join them on Fridays to welcome the Sabbath with praise and worship at 8.30 in the evening. And Yuan, thank you for the scripture reading. 
Now, we still have a number of Sabbaths to go before we could possibly reopen the church. And I would like to invite anyone, if you would like to offer a special item, a recorded one, of course, or do the uh, scripture reading or even the prayer, uh, please let me know. I would uh, gladly uh, welcome uh, anyone uh, to participate in our uh, worship streaming uh, on Sabbaths. A blessed and happy Sabbath, Church. Uh, thank you again for uh, joining us today. Now, our study uh, comes from John chapter 9. It is the story of a blind man who was blind from birth. Open your Bibles with me to John chapter 9, verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Close your eyes with me for a moment. And then try to imagine that you could not see. That all around you is a total blackness. There is nothing but darkness. You could not see who is with you right now. And uh, as you try to imagine the world, all its beauty is completely gone. No flowers, no hills, no mountains. The sky has disappeared. You know, even the night, you don't see the stars anymore. There is just total blackness and darkness. And keep on imagining. And you could not see for a few moments more. Now open your eyes. Thank you very much. Let me ask you, would you want to stay in that state of blackness and darkness? I don't think you would. Now, I'm not going to ask you how it feels to be blind. Because even after closing our eyes for a moment and imagining we could not see, that was but a tiny glimpse of what it is like for someone who is blind. You know, the truth is, it is not easy to be blind. Now, I know we have people today living normal and uh, productive lives in spite of the uh, blindness. But to be blind is hard, it is enormously challenging, and it is restricting. However, the blind man in our story today was not only blind, but he was also blind from birth. You know, if I lose my sight today, I have to say that I would still be better off than this man. For I have 43 years of sight. And at least, you know, I have a point of reference for maybe my imagination. All right. But I could not see anything anymore. But this man... The man in our story today, he was blind from birth. That even the color black was not real to him. You know, for him, uh, there is no a point of reference. And cognitive scientists today would tell us uh, that those blind from birth, you know, have no sense of a color at all. So to this blind man, the world is just nothingness. The world is just nothingness. And of course, in the time of Jesus, there was no a braille system of uh, reading and writing. There was, uh, uh, there were no guide dogs, I think. There were no seeing dogs. And there was no support for a blind a people. And so for most of them, for most of and the blind people in the time of Jesus, the only recourse for them was begging. And so this blind man in our story today, he was not only blind, but he was as well a man begging. And that is according to verse 8. But in one day, one day, while he was begging, 
something beautiful happened. The story says that Jesus passed by and he saw him. Jesus saw someone who could not see. I love that statement. Jesus saw someone who could not see. Now let me pause here for a moment and highlight something that I think is a powerful force. Now I believe that Jesus, when Jesus saw the blind man, it was no accident and it was no chance encounter. Jesus meant it to be. You know, one of the names of Jesus, uh, one of the names of a God in the Old Testament is Elroy, the God who sees. And this is our God who numbers you know, the hairs of our head, who sees our circumstances, who knows our pains, who knows everything about us, the past, the present, and even our future. I believe that in this story, Jesus knew this blind man even before he saw him that day. There's a beautiful verse in uh, the Old Testament, in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, this is how I imagine that encounter happened when Jesus saw the blind man. And I would like to share this with you from the perspective, at least from the perspective of the blind man himself. So here we have a blind man. As he was begging, he could hear all these footsteps as people passed by. And he was hoping and longing that a pair of these footsteps would stop and offer him a coin or something. He knew the people saw him, but suddenly, by the sound of all the, uh, the footsteps, he could also hear that nobody was paying attention to him. Then suddenly, a footsteps stopped close to him. Not just a pair of footsteps, but a number of them. So not just one, but a number of people were paying attention to him. And he was very excited. But he was also worried. He was excited of the possibility that this would be his first few coins of the day. But at the same time, worried that this would be people who would remind him again that his suffering was caused by his sins or by his appearance. Unfortunately, he was right to be worried. You know, he heard those dreaded words, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And this was the disciples asking Jesus in verse 2. You know, in the time of Jesus, there was this belief and uh, a prevailing thought that suffering is the result of a person's sins. And the greater the sins, the greater the suffering. Uh, Rabbi Ami made a statement highlighting this uh, general principle of belief about sin and suffering. He said, there is no death without sin, and there is no suffering without iniquity. Now, let me quickly point it out that yes, pain and suffering came into this world because of a sin. That's very clear. That's a biblical teaching. And on a personal level, there are diseases that are direct consequences of our sinful actions. Or that our sinful actions may sometimes cause someone's pain and suffering. However, I want to make it clear 
that it is wrong to think and believe that our pains and sufferings are always caused by our sins, or that the greater our sins, the greater would be our sufferings. When the disciples saw the blind man, they did not see him as someone who needed immediate help. What they saw was an opportunity to ask Jesus about the cause of his condition. They made a theological inquiry that superseded a human need. Now, to be fair with the disciples, it was probably, uh, probably not uh, a lack of a compassion on their part, but definitely it was a misplaced priority. It was a misplaced priority that interrupted the blind man's encounter with Jesus. They interrupted the blind man's full encounter with Jesus. I want to pause here again for a moment to say that what we believe and our desire to affirm what we believe must never supersede our acts of compassion towards those who are suffering. You know, our Christianity, our Adventism, what we believe would be of no meaning if they do not make a practical and positive difference to human needs around us. And I want to highlight this to all of us today. What I believe, my Christianity, my Adventism would be of no meaning if they do not make a practical and positive difference to human needs around me. And let me also add that as we follow Jesus, let us be mindful that we don't become like the disciples, that we don't become interruptions to others in the encounter with him. Rather, let us prepare the way, let us clear the way, let us make the way wide open for others to fully encounter Jesus in their lives. Now, going back to the story, fortunately for the blind man, Jesus was focused on his purpose and his ministry of compassion that day. And he would not allow this interruption from the disciples to deny the blind man his full encounter with him. It says in John chapter 9, verses 3 and 4, Jesus answered, Jesus answered the disciples, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him, and I must work the works of him who sent me. While it is day, the night is coming when no one can work. When the blind man heard these words, he probably could not believe it. He was probably thinking, a rabbi? Who is this rabbi defending me? But before he could ask or say a word about what was going on around him, he heard somebody spitting on the ground. And then things happened very quickly. And suddenly he felt something on his eyes. Mud. There was mud on his eyes. And then the rabbi commanded him, go once in the pool of Siloam. And the story says in verse 7, And so the man went and washed and came home seeing. Now, I'm not sure whether it was fate or the dirt on his eyes that made him obey the command of Jesus to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Because the story did not say. But the most important thing was what happened after he obeyed. He came home seeing. 
He was blind, but now he sees. Let me point out something here about our salvation in Jesus. The blind man did not ask for healing. It's very clear in the story. You know, there was no request for healing coming from the blind man. He was begging for coins or maybe for food, but not for healing. He was begging just to survive another day. You know, and he's probably been told so many times in his life that there was no hope for him to see again. But Jesus saw him. And Jesus took the initiative to heal him. It was all because of Jesus. Brethren and friends, today, our freedom from spiritual blindness, our deliverance from sin, you know, the light that uh, took us out of darkness, the joy of salvation that we have today, and the promise of eternal restoration, they are all because of God's initiative. God took the initiative and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is our gospel today. This is our good news today. Jesus died for us, and he died for us while we were still sinners. You know, there is still uh, so much uh, to learn from the story of this blind man. And the whole chapter of uh, John 9, uh, 41 verses in all, was all about the blind man's encounter with Jesus. And I would like to encourage you to dig deeper you know, into this chapter, into the story of this blind man and the man who was blind. However, let me quickly highlight the part of the story where the healing of the blind man was investigated by the Pharisees because it happened on the Sabbath. The Pharisees accused Jesus of being a lawbreaker and a sinner, and therefore incapable of such a miracle. And so they summoned uh, the man who was blind twice to appear before them, and they questioned him. They wanted him to change his story about what happened. They wanted him to support the accusations of Jesus. But the man who was blind, with all confidence and courage, declared in verse 25. And this was our scripture reading today. He said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. You know what happened to him after that? The story says that the Pharisees were so angry with him, that they threw him out. They threw him out. But something happened after he was thrown out by the Pharisees. And it was a beautiful ending to the story of the blind man and the man who was blind. Let me read to you John chapter 9, 35 to 38. It says, verse 35, Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Verse 36, Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. In verse 37, Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. And then in verse 38, Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. 
Jesus came back. Jesus looked for him. It was not enough that he gave him his sign. It was not enough for Jesus that he healed the man physically. He came back and he looked for him after he was thrown out. And so that day, the man who was blind not only experienced physical restoration, but also received the one assurance that matters the most, an eternal restoration with Jesus. The one assurance that matters the most, the blind man who now sees receive from Jesus an eternal restoration with him. Brethren and friends, I hope that when our fight is challenged, when we are questioned about our experience of salvation in Jesus, like this man who was blind, we will declare with all confidence and without fear, I have encountered the Savior and my life is no longer the same. I was in darkness, but now I see the light in Jesus. And here's the promise for us. One day, Jesus would come again and he would give us the one restoration that matters, our eternal restoration with him in glory. This is my hope and my prayer today. God bless and amen.
Let us bow our heads for our benediction today. Our most gracious and loving Father in heaven, thank you for this experience of fellowship that we have with you today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you that today we can declare that we were once blind, but now we see. And I pray that our experience of sight, of spiritual sight, will continue every day until you come again the second time. And to my brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and give you joy and peace now until he comes again the second time. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you, Charles, for joining us today in our worship streaming. i see you again, or join us again next Sabbath. God bless, and bye-bye.